Hey guys, this is Miss Briscoe here with today's math lesson. I hope you all are having a great week. I'm excited to get to see you this month for our live lesson. We have some fun things planned. So for our lesson today in math, our learning goal is I can use renaming to find the difference. And that should say difference, not different. So go ahead and change that on your paper to find the difference of two mixed numbers. So we talked about yesterday what mixed numbers are and the difference means that we're subtracting. So I can use renaming and we know renaming is kind of like rewriting. So you're, you're kind of like when we change a fraction, we change the denominator, it's still the same amount, it's just using different numbers. Just like if you had a decimal and a fraction, they can both equal the same amount but they're just shown different ways. So we're gonna be showing fractions different ways so that we can find the different difference of two mixed numbers. So I'm going to give you two examples here. So I have two and one half and I'm going to be subtracting one and five six. Now we know that the two, the whole numbers, two and one half is greater than one and five six. However, when we go to subtract them, do you see how our top number here is one and our top number here is five? When we rename these fractions, you're not going to be able to take away this fraction from this fraction. So we're going to have to borrow from the whole number. So that's what we're going to be doing today is learning how do we borrow when it comes to fractions. So the first step is to rewrite your fraction with a common denominator. So we have 2 and 6. Well I know that a common denominator between 2 and 6 is going to be 6 because 6 can go into 6 and 2 can go into 6. So 2 times 3 equals 6. So what I do to the bottom I have to do to the top. So 1 times 3 equals 3. 6 times 1, so what I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. 5 times 1. So I have rewritten my fraction. So you see here what I was talking about? The 3 cannot subtract a 5. But our whole number here is bigger than our whole number here, so it's possible. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take this fraction right here and we're going to have to borrow. We have to borrow from this fraction so that this from borrow from our whole number so that our fraction is a little bit bigger. So when we're thinking of this fraction, it can be broken down into one plus one plus three six because one plus one equals two and then we have our fraction of three six. Well, we know that fractions equal one if they have the same number on the top as the bottom. So an easy way for us to do this is to change our whole number into a fraction. And since we have a common denominator of 6, this whole number can be changed into 6 over 6 because 6 over 6 still equals 1. If I show you on our diagram here, I have 6 pieces. If all 6 of them are shaded in, it still equals 1 whole. So that means that now we have a fraction where it's our 1 whole. Then we're going to add our 6 plus our 3, which is going to be 9 6. Okay, so now do you see that 9 is going to be able to subtract 5? So we have 1 and 9, 6, which still equals 2 and 3, 6. It's just written a different way. Minus 1 and 5, 6. So 1 minus 1 is 0. 9 minus 5 is 4. Now if you can tell, this is not in simplest form because there's a number that goes into both 4 and 6, and that is 2. So it can be divided by 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So our answer is going to be 2 thirds. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you that with our second fraction. So if I have 6 and 1 half, and I'm going to be subtracting 1 and 2 fifths. So you see how we're going to run into the same problem where this number is bigger, but our fraction numerator is smaller. So what we have to do is let's first go ahead and rewrite our fractions with common denominators, 2 and 5. So I'm going to list out my multiples for 2 and 5. And then I have 5, 10, and I can stop right there because I already see that 10 is a common least common multiple of both. So 2 times 5 equals 10, so 1 times 5 equals 5. 5 times 2 equals 10, so 2 times 2 equals 4. So now I've rewritten them. So now what I have to do 
Well, it looks like we don't have to rewrite this one. It just so happens with our luck, you don't have to rewrite it. So we can go ahead and skip this step, and we have 6 and 5 tenths minus 1 and 4 tenths, and 6 minus 1 is 5, 5 minus 4 is 1 tenth. Huh. Well, there we go. We didn't have to rewrite that one. At least you guys got some practice doing common denominators. So another way that this can be done is you can, um, you can rename both fractions as fractions greater than one. Now this is another way for you to do it. You don't have to do it this way, but I'm just gonna show you both options just so that you have both of them. So what we need to do is first we need to rewrite the fractions with common denominators and we've already done that. So let's take for example the 2 and 1 half minus 1 and 5 6. We've already rewritten them with the common denominators and they came out to this right here. 2 and 3 6 minus 1 and 5 6. What they want you to do is rename both fractions as fractions greater than 1. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and write them both out as fractions greater than one. So two, if I had two, it's gonna be written out like this. So they want you to write out both fractions to where they're just both fractions greater than one. So do you see how my ones, I've turned them into just fractions. They still equal one, but they're just fractions. So six plus six is 12. 12 plus three is gonna be 15 six. Sorry, not sixteenths. So 15 six still equals two and three six, it's just written a different way. And then you can take your second number, the one and five sixths, and you're going to rewrite that as a fraction greater than one. So six plus five is 11 sixteenths. So what we have is we have 15 six, I don't know why I keep writing sixteenths, minus 11 sixths. So 15, minus 11 is going to be 4 sixths. And again, we can simplify that, and that's going to equal 2 thirds. So that's just another way of doing the same type of thing, except that you're writing both problems out as fractions greater than 1. So you can go ahead and um, I can show you that again with our second one. Um, so we have 6 and 1 half, and we're minusing 1 and 2 fifths. We've already rewritten them, and we found out that it was 6 and 5 tenths minus 1 and 4 tenths. So they're simplified. I'm going to do this work down here. So if I have 6 and 5 tenths, well, 6 and 5 tenths is going to be 6 wholes. plus my 5 tenths. Well, if I'm going to write them as a whole, it would just be 10 over 10. 10 over 10, 10 over 10, 10 over 10, 10 over 10, and 10 over 10. And then I have my 5 tenths. So you're going to add all of these up. So you have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 65. So that equals 65 tenths. And then you're going to take your second number. You're going to take your second number and you're going to do the 1 and 4 tenths and you're going to write it out. So the 1 would be 10 over 10 plus the 4 tenths is going to equal 14 tenths. So you have 65 tenths minus 14 tenths. So you would just come up here and do 65 minus 14 which equals 51 tenths. So now we still have a fraction greater than one because we realized we didn't need to change ours up here. Let me go ahead and show you how to get this back into a mixed number. You're gonna find out how many tens are up here. Well, I know that 51 can be divided by 10 five times. So that means that I whole number is five because if I were to separate this top number out, there would be five tens and then one left over. So my one left over, which cannot be divided evenly, 
and goes on top. And that is the same number that we had up above. So you can go ahead and rewatch this video. Let me know if you have any questions. We can always meet in Adobe Connect. Have a great day.